Welcome back, Ron Schleck, Matt Wilson, another episode of Figuring It Out for BTB Security. Today, talking about something that we've touched on a few times before, it's really what to do pre-assessment or post-assessment. There's a number of different ways that uh, people kind of, or I guess it's before, during, we can talk yes. about before, during, and after the assessment, kind of touched about after the assessment before, but it's important because I think a lot of times look to providers to kind of, you know, help them understand what they should be doing. Um, we're here to give you a little bit of advice, pretty general. There's not a lot of um, specifics in terms of what our recommendations would be, but things that we've seen. Way to about. sell it, by the way. Like, yeah, way to I, talk it up. <laughs> Just tune um, in for the next 10 minutes. It's not going to be anything new or useful, yeah. I guess. <laughs> It is good stuff because it's stuff that, you know, it's, these are tips that we've seen that our clients have uh, carried out and things that they've done before the assessments and things that they've done during and then after that we think have made the assessments even more successful. So Matt, I'm not sure that you have, I know you have a list of things that you've kind of jotted down and thought about a little bit beforehand. Um, you didn't put it in an email. Um, actually in your email, it said Ron never reads these. So, uh, you know, you can start off because I have my list. I'm actually prepared. I actually I'm think really, one. I'm very well prepared for this. And you can't see it because my yeah, virtual background. But look at this sticky note. That's how well yeah. Hey, look, Harry Potter was written on a napkin. Okay. So you can, right. you can do this, Ron. I get it. No, I actually, I think the one that you and I had chatted about that I've heard you say before, is, and it's something we get when we're talking with clients about doing an assessment. When we talk, when I talk to our sales team on the sales enablement side, it's about getting to the why, right? Why are you doing this? And know what, like, what's the purpose of this? Is this solving a regulatory need? Is this just a leading practice? Is this just an internal auditor asking for it? Is it an external audit? Are your customers asking for this? Know why. And all of them can be true, by the way, right? All of them can be true. Simultaneously. But knowing why and communicating that to your assessor, that's why we ask, right? Because it doesn't dramatically change what we do. It just changes um, maybe how we go about things and the kinds of conversations we have. And knowing your goals will let us keep all that in mind. So I like the, like the know your why is, is really critical to me to doing this. And hopefully it comes up when you're talking to us on the front end before you sign paper. But if you're, if you're whoever you're considering assessing your environment isn't asking you that, you should kind of look at them with a side eye to me. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of times we do get the more generic answer. Well, you know, we've stated in our security policy or for our vendors or partners um, or even clients that we will do a penetration test every year. It's like, okay, so you're checking the box to get a penetration test or whatever the assessment is done. However, you know, what other things do you want to learn about your environment? particularly or how can we help you and we usually ask those questions from from a btb perspective to get a little bit further down in the sex sure we understand that you have to do it um, there's a lot of people that have to do it but it's you know what are you trying and there's you know people usually you, you can usually dig through and get a good answer on why but that goes to you know one of the things that i think is important which is organize yourself and understand what your goals are right and tie in some of those other projects that you have going in to this particular goal. If you're planning on something specifically, if there's an infrastructure change that may be happening and you know the pen test may be touching on that new environment or an application assessment, whatever it may be, think about not just this particular assessment, but what do you have going on in six months, in a year, in two years, in three years, in five years? Yep. You know, are you planning to do monitoring and response in some capacity? Okay, we'll use this as an opportunity to test what your monitoring capabilities would actually yeah. pick up during an assessment and help build that case for your project six months, a year down the line from now. And I think a lot of people look at it as like a point in time assessment, um, but we see more and more people that are actually sitting back and taking stock in what's being done and how it ties into sort of the overall security organization. Yeah, it's no secret that um, my entire career has been customers would say, hey, I've been asking for this for the last two years and it's gotten slashed from the budget. Could you guys put this in the report? Yeah, if it's a legitimate security issue, we're going to, right? If it's like something like multi-factor authentication or, you know, internal segmentation, network segmentation, like good 
security practices, that's what we're here for, right? We can, you know, I always said like, I don't have a wand, right? I can't just make this happen in your environment. But as long as it's accurate and true, we're happy to capture your kind of concerns if they do align with the goal of improving your security posture. Again, yeah, tie it to what you think you might wanna do or what your organization's doing. And, and keep in mind, any outside assessor isn't as good as we, I think we can be the good ones, they don't know your organization like you know your organization. So whether we're there for a week or a month or a couple months, we still can't learn everything you've accumulated over years of being there and the relationships and the dynamics. So I'm not saying give us your secret diaries, but share what you can to put us on the right things quicker because it's just gonna help you, right? Like there's no, there's no logic to ignoring the ills of the past. Let's call them out there and let's correct them. Yeah. And that, that kind of goes right into, you know, what should people be doing during the assessment? One of my big things would be, you know, be clear on timing and yeah. output and keep, you know, keep an active part in um, your assessment project. If you just kind of let it go and, you know, you're only answering questions or kind of checking in. I'm not saying that I think, you know, sort of macro managing any project is a good thing to do, no. but, you know, being clear on timing, what the output should be. And even looking back on previous assessments, okay, you know, how can we update what we previously had done to make sure that we can show yep. that we're making progress with this assessment? You know, opening up a little bit, giving some more information sometimes and showing things that have happened previously to make sure that they can be included in the assessment or show progress. And like you said, um, you know, bringing up those things that you may be working on, having a little bit more transparency. So it's an assessment, but it's also organizationally, how does everything tie together to help you promote and you know, increase your security yeah. posture? I, I put that under the banner of like prepping your team, right? And that means a couple of things. So um, you wanna engage your leadership. Sometimes I've done what I call like ceremonial meetings with CEOs or C-suite. They just wanna see who they're paying, right? Like, hey, we're paying this guy, whatever, or this company, whatever. I wanna look them in the eye and know who I'm paying. Cool, I'll do that. There are times that C-suite and other senior leaders do have, you know, look, given their position, they might have great insight into their risk, their risk appetite, um, investments and future of the business. They might have concerns. It's come up in good meetings I've had with C-suite that have been valuable and contributed to the assessment. So don't ignore that. So engage your leadership, prep them, but also prep your team by who is project managing this. There's times when clients say, hey, we have a PMO. We want to run it through them. They're going to coordinate and quarterback all the meetings. Fine. We'll accommodate that. Other times clients either don't have or don't want to, and they go, you guys do it. No problem. We're, I would say like, we're adults. We've done this. We're professionals. We're no problem using email and phone to coordinate our own meetings, but sometimes for political reasons or just whatever internal comfort, they want to do it on their own. No problem. But make sure you communicate that internally first, what's going to happen. And that way your assessor can adapt. Right? Don't just surprise, we have a PMO and they're going to be difficult to work with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. not going to end well. Well, how about after the assessment? You know, kind of one of the things we've talked about, um, kind of furthering those things in a previous figuring it out, but I think it's probably good to bring it up here as well. Yeah. One of the things that we always tell people is to make sure that you make a plan and kind of follow up with it. Make sure that there's accountability for accountability. the, the findings that come out of it. Um, Otherwise, you know, kind of tying it back to some of the pre-assessment activities that I had mentioned before, tie it into your overall goals. Use it for, you know, whatever you need to do. If it's budget justification, if it's tying it into how exactly things or projects should be laid out um, and just, you know, ordering the timing around those um, and work with your assessor to make sure, again, that those things are clear so that, you can even sit down afterwards and say, all right, these are all your findings. This is how I have it ranked out. But realistically, how should we, you know, what's your input on how these things should be ranked out? Use the person not only for the assessment capability that you've hired, but kind of you an advisor. Oh, man, we're losing you good, Ron. The streaming at the select household. There we go. 
the control room is is a uh, uh, is flailing activity. Yeah, I lost you for like a good fifteen seconds, but I think what you were saying is tying it all together. Accountability. It's something we brought up before. It's absolutely critical. You need that accountability. Otherwise, why'd you pay us? Why'd you pay anybody to do it? And I don't care what you paid. If you paid five hundred dollars and you're happy with the document you got, by all means. But if you don't act on that document, you totally wasted that five hundred bucks, right? Whatever it might be. Why? Why do it if you're not going to actually act on it? Yeah, you could tick a box, but someone's eventually going to figure out that that's not sufficient. Yeah. So, Tie it into tie it into your overall goals and make it living. You know, don't just yeah. leave it sit there. Agreed. Well, I think we covered that. Um, next week we have up. Do I still need to be doing internal penetration testing? I think that's uh, we've talked about pen testing a couple of times now. But like the whole question of like, do I need to do it at all and why do it? So we'll get into what a pen test, or what an internal pen test is, and why it might be relevant. Uh, even in the COVID uh, arrangement that we're all in these days. Yeah, interesting. Interesting for sure. Well, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Have you're a welcome, Ron, good and you're rest welcome. of the day. And uh, that's it. We'll see you next week, folks. All right, see ya.